Why is the sky blue? Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Bemen und Herren, damas y cavaleros, no shimen jang shemen. I apologize profusely for the horrific pronunciation, but today we are addressing the question. Whenever I describe Knowledgeka to someone, I always give this question as an example. Here on Knowledgeka, we ask questions about anything and everything. Like, why is the sky blue? Today, we shall be asking and hopefully answering that very question. Roll titles. <music> Welcome to Knowledgeka. My name is Danny Ward and today we are asking why is the sky blue? Light from the sun travels through space and reaches our atmosphere. From here the light particles are then scattered in a process known as Rayleigh scattering. This occurs as gas particles in the atmosphere, like oxygen and nitrogen, cause light to be deflected. Shorter wavelengths are scattered more strongly. These include colours at the short end of the visible light spectrum, like blue and violet. This means that more of these colours eventually end up in our eyes. Light itself contains a smaller amount of violet light than blue, and our eyes are also naturally more sensitive to the good blue stuff, and so the sky looks blue. As you look down across the horizon, however, the blue starts to get a little bit paler, right? Sometimes it doesn't even look blue anymore. Well, the light entering at the horizon has to travel further to reach your eye, and so the light particles still go through Rayleigh scattering, however the shorter wavelength particles are favoured much less over a longer period. So much so, in fact, that the light at the horizon can even begin to look quite white. Rayleigh scattering can also describe why a sunset is red or orange. As we move around the sun, the distance light particles must travel changes. It's much shorter for light particles to travel to our eyes at high noon than it is later at sunset. This extended travel distance allows for a greater light scattering of longer wavelengths, such as red and orange frequencies. Sometimes atmospheric pollutants can add to this. Sulfuric aerosols such as sulfur dioxide can further add to the long wavelength scattering in a process known as Mie scattering. These pollutants can come from burning fossil fuels, industrial processes, volcanoes, forest fires, mining dust, sea spray and more. But don't use this as an excuse to justify air pollution though. We might get nice sunsets, but it's probably not doing great things for our climate and our health and too much pollution will actually just lead to the sun being blocked out anyway. The sunsets will be ruined. So, there we go. Question answered, right? Not quite. I now know for a fact that all of my Western European friends will describe their sky, from the vast majority of the year anyway, as anything but blue. I mean, here in England, we are famous for our grey, miserable skies. They've basically become a tourist attraction in their own right. So why can the sky also turn grey? There are a combination of reasons, but it essentially boils down to one of two reasons. Large air particles on hazy days, or thick rain clouds. But we're not going to stop there, are we? So what exactly are these mysterious large air particles? These air particles are known as atmospheric optics. Lots of water molecules in the atmosphere will lead to a hazy grey looking sky as they alter Rayleigh scattering and lead to more grey light. And this helps paint our glorious English skies the colour we all know and... Is love the white word? They're grey anyway. That now begs the question, how about grey rain clouds? The other reason behind grey skies. How do they work? Well, as a cloud thickens, it gains density due to the accumulation of water droplets and ice crystals as a ni natural part of our weather system. This once again leads to an increase in light scattering, and less light is able to penetrate through the cloud from the sun, and so it looks visibly darker. Now, how about at night? Why is the sky not blue then? 
seems like it should be obvious. When we turn away from the sun, it gets dark. That equals a black sky. Obvious, right? Well, as you probably guessed by the sarcastic, skeptical tone in my voice, that's not all of the story. Olber's paradox and the Doppler effect can help explain our night sky in a little more detail. Uh, what was that again? Old bears and the double thing? What's all that about? <clears throat> Olber's paradox describes why the sky isn't bright at night. Why would it even be bright? Well, think about it. The sun is the star and produces a lot of light. Similarly, we are surrounded by a multitude of stars all giving out their own light. So this would suggest that it actually shouldn't be dark. This would be the case if the universe was a static, finite thing. The universe, however, is an ever-changing beast that is constantly expanding, which means the distant stars and galaxies are in fact moving away from us, where those that are the furthest are in fact moving the fastest. You can thank Edwin Hubble for that discovery. So what gives rise to this Doppler effect? Light for these far away, fast traveling stars, when it reaches us, is no longer on the visible light spectrum. It's shifted. This means we can't see it with our own eyes. It's still there. We can still measure it. But it comes in the form of infrared and radio waves. These have a longer wavelength pattern, which means the light particles will pass a certain point in a given time slower. The frequency of the wave will be lower. Why does this mean we can't see them? Now that one really is something for another episode. But in a sentence though, to hold you over, light which has a wavelength too short or too long won't excite our eye receptors. And so to put it simply, we just can't detect it. The Doppler effect applies to all different types of waves. The one you're probably most familiar would be sound waves. You've probably heard of an emergency services siren pass you by. It seems to get faster as the vehicle gets closer to you, and as it passes, it gets slower and longer again. No, this isn't some strange trick which the ambulance service is playing on you. Save those conspiracy theories. This is the Doppler effect in action. And there you have it, a bit of detail into the world of light, with a bit of sound in there for good measure. We have only just scratched the surface of this topic. The physics of light is a huge area of study that has colossal real-world applications and benefits. It's one of those things that we take for granted each and every day, but so much of our society's understanding of light really does underpin many of the technologies that we all know and love. Interesting stuff, huh? Thanks for watching today's episode. Be sure to follow Knowledgeka on social media and to subscribe to the channel to be alerted of all the latest updates and uploads. I upload regularly each week, so be sure to tune in for more random facts and learning. I've been Danny Ward. Stay hungry for factuality.